What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Randy here with RTS Mobile Gaming bringing you a phenomenal video today. We are playing the Lord of the Rings Rise to War and in today's video we are doing a all there is to know about Gorbag. After three seasons of using Gorbag, we're going to be talking about the best skill build, the best units, and the best gear for your Gorbag. We will be covering a Respect level 5, Wisdom level 2, level 50 Gorbag build for anybody who is a free to play player. Uh, and then as you continue to advance your gore bags respect level, of course, that uh, the amount of skill points that you can commit to different skill trees will increase. Okay, so here we go. Get excited. Boop. Boom, baby. There it is. So the primary skill that you're going to want to make sure you use, uh, whether you're a spec 3 or 5, is going to be the gray leader tree. With 22 points in the gray leader tree, you are going to reduce all of the damage your orcs take by 20 nine percent all the time absolutely amazing talent tree for keeping your orcs alive okay in addition they will gain 14 speed uh, if you are respect five you're going to go down into the watchman of sirith ungol which will give you fantastic 30 percent damage to your orcs it will give your orcs immunity to madness you will grab uh the enrage ability which will give you a fantastic 60 percent damage bonus on rounds three six and nine and you will put one point into the madness debuff on the enemy for a chance to trigger madness uh, every couple of rounds as well, okay? And any extra points you have, uh, whether you're respect 5 or respect uh, 12, whatever it is, you're going to drop down into the old orc tree, and you're going to pick up the old orc ability as well as the new heal. I prefer this over the interrogator with the restraint stun because that damage only lines up one time in the fight, you're only going to really use Interrogator one time in the fight for one round, whereas the Healing Nuke is rounds 3, 6, and 9. And I like to think you will be more benefited from healing uh, than you will from the um, iffy stun and damage lining combo. Okay, So that's my professional opinion on that. As far as a few reports that exemplify this type of build with various ranges of gear and units, Let's take a quick look. Super excited for that, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. In this first report, you can see a gore bag. This is a uh, relatively free-to-play gore bag with, you know, one-star gear. Defeating a decently geared Thorin um, really absolutely, uh, absolutely put out the pain on Thorin's axe throwers here. Uh, the gore bag's reapers were able to jump to the back line and punch the axe throwers directly in the face, you know, starting off in round one. So... Really a phenomenal amount of damage output from Gorbag. Uh, this particular build has points in the Interrogator tree instead of the Healing tree, which is fine. Uh, it's really your preference, okay? This next report is uh, a fantastic Gorbag attack against a Grima. This is with the inter uh, without the Interrogator tree, but this does have the Healing tree in there. Now, the fantastic thing is Grima really specializes in madness. However, since Gorbag gives his troops anti-madness, it's really only Gorbag and his auto attacks that will affect the enemy, okay? Uh, I mean, that will affect your own units with madness. So Gorbag's anti-madness ability from the Watchman of Sirith Ungol makes him massively strong against madness-based commanders like Grima or Sauron, Galadriel, any of these command Denethor, right? Any of these commanders that really specialize in madness. Um, Frodo and Sam, they, they're madness guys. Anybody who's big on madness is going to be pretty significantly countered by Gorbag, okay? On to the next one. Here is another report. This is a very, very geared Gorbag against a uh, Faramir. This is with a purely ranged damage build. As you can see here, he's got the healing in there for almost 40k in healing between the accessory and the heal nuke ability. And then, of course, the soldier damage is absolutely out of this world with those Morgul Arbalasts, which are phenomenal, okay? The last report, and this is the port that we're going to actually go through in greater detail in just a minute before we talk about what the recommended troops and the recommended gear is. Um, in this report, you can see, again, this is the gore bag with the interrogator build without the healing nuke, uh, putting out phenomenal damage, countering, like I said, a madness-based commander, Galadriel, who applies a lot of madness to your units. Uh, gore bag was able to massively dominate Galadriel in this fight, okay? 
All right. Well, that is the fantastic screen slideshow there. Let's jump directly into the actual report itself. Here we go. Boop. That's right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Whoop, wrong account. <laughs> so many accounts open. All right. All right. So shout out to Nepo for providing this report. As you can see here, like I said, this guy's got, you know, zero star, one star gold gear with a couple with a one piece of four star purple gear on. Uh, this gore bag is respect level 10, which is why he has so many points to put into interrogator and restraint. At respect level five, you will not have enough points to really make good use of interrogator, which is why I'm saying go into the healing tree at lower respect levels. Once you get the respect, you know, 10 to 12, yeah, you can go into the interrogator tree and gain a guaranteed stun with a high damage nuke, okay? So, uh, that's his gear and stats and setup. Galadriel, definitely a little bit more of a whaled out Galadriel, much higher respect level Galadriel, okay? With a total of, uh, looks like 61 points here for Galadriel with much uh, higher starred gear. All right, so this is a really great test of what Gorbag can do against the right targets, okay? As far as actual damage output and unit composition, uh, this particular build is running a mixture of Morgul Arbalests and the Stalkers with, uh, I mean, and, and the Raiders here with a nice, uh, yep, the Stalkers and the Raiders. <laughs> it's like a football team in here. Uh, this Gorbag build is specializing in all three damage types, which makes it tough to optimize your gear. Personally, my recommendation is pick either uh, the Reapers or the Arbalest for your main damage dealer and go from there. But this works just fine, as you can clearly see. So let's take a look at how that damage was dispersed. Very evenly. So the Morgul Arbalest putting in a little bit more damage output here than the Stalkers, uh, the Reapers, and then the Raiders... A little bit more damage received, a little bit less damage output. They're a little bit more tanky on this uh, particular fight, okay? Here we go into the report itself. Ladies and gentlemen, then we're going to jump over and talk about optimized gear and optimized units for Gorbag. So get excited for that, folks. Super duper excited. Happy Friday. Actually, I guess you'll probably watch this video on Saturday. Happy Saturday. Here we go. So keep in mind, all of the orc units are going to have a 30% damage bonus with anti-madness going immediately into round one and onwards. Here's the reapers, even with white council. How much white council? It's only 5.6%. All right. That's okay. Here comes the reapers with a 5.6% debuff to their damage, uh, attacking the bone knights and dealing fantastic damage. Okay. The arbalest coming in for a 5,000 damage hit plus another slap in there for another... Uh, so about uh, 6,000 damage, okay, about 6,000 damage there in that tit, and then we here we go with another one for another uh, about 5,200 damage, so a uh, little bit of a lower damage roll right there, but about 11,000 damage for the Arbalest in that round, okay, pretty good damage. The Raiders getting attacked, they're taking some damage, very nice. Here we go into round two, folks. Let's see what that damage looks like now. Again, Bow Knights, 8,700 hit. Here's the Arbalest again, hitting for uh, 40 and 11, uh, so we got 5,500 damage there. Then we have the second strike here, so now we're at almost 6K. So again, we're up in about the 11,000 damage territory for the Arbalest in round two. The Raiders are putting out a little bit of damage, but it doesn't quite compare. 5,000 damage on the Heralds, okay? And here in round three, this is the last round we're going to really take a look at. You're going to see uh, all kinds of things, right, from the Corrupting Curse to the in, uh, Enrage ability. Really, really nice. So the Raiders, due to their speed, will attack faster than Gorbag pops Enrage. So the Raiders won't benefit from this 60% damage bonus until round four. Um, but the uh, Reapers and the Arbalest will benefit. Okay, uh, let's see. Corrupting Curse, if the Bow Knight is actually activated by madness before they get damage out. Galadriel putting in some nice healing here. Look at that. And here it is. Check this out. The Raiders immune to madness, unaffected by Galadriel's madness. That's right. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. 60% damage increase. The Reapers punch the Bow Knights for almost 16,400 damage, folks. The Arbalest coming in hot and heavy with 
about uh, 8,000 damage here in one hit, then about 10,000 damage in the next hit, so about 18,000 damage in that round. And here's the Raiders with their 60% buff. Where is it? I don't see their 60% buff. The Raiders' damage bonus might have bugged out. I've seen that before, so it's possible that it bugged out. Here is the restraint, so this is cool. So now they're going to get bonus damage from Interrogator, and they're stunned. So you're going to see another huge damage round here from the Reapers and the Arbalest, okay? And then, of course, round five, the Reapers gain their real damage. What does round six look like? Let's look at round six with the Reapers, because now they're enraged, and they have their damage bonus. What does round six Reapers look like? 2,500 Reapers are remaining in round six, folks. Here we go. What happens here in round Six, enormous healing output from Gladrill. The Reapers hitting for 16,729. Okay, that's that's decent. It's less damage than I expected, I'm not going to lie. Uh, they must have had a very low damage roll on that. The Arbalest coming in hot and heavy with some more pew pew, folks. I mean... Oh, here we go. The Guard of the Tower now afflicted by madness. Gorbag is applying madness two times in a row. We're going to see enormous damage received by the Guard of the Tower because of that. I want to find the Reapers. Reapers coming in. I mean, guys, we're seeing we're seeing a lot of damage output here. Uh, it's it's very very effective. This Gorbag Madness ability, even though it's a, only a thirty percent chance to hit, it can be very very strong. Okay. That combines very nicely with the Enrage ability in rounds three, six, and nine. Then, of course, the Interrogator here, combining with the Restraint, Guaranteed Stun in rounds 4 and 8. Interrogator is going to affect rounds three, uh, 3 to 4, 6 to 7, and uh, 9 to 10. Uh, so, overall, good performance. Okay, that's the battle report. Let's start talking about gear, folks, because that's the next part of this conversation, all right? Gear-wise, the best gear that you're going to run a one... Uh, blah, 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 blah. The best gear that you're going to want to run for Gorbag as a free-to-play player is going to be, most likely, the Cutlass Weapon. If you're going to run a melee build, having a 3-star Cutlass Weapon will give you plus 2 attack and plus 6 melee damage. A 3-star weapon is highly attainable. I have one on my free-to-play. In fact, let's go to my free-to-play Gorbag and let's take a quick look at him. All right. Gorbag, where art thou? Gorbag is here. You can see here... The gear uh, and the skill layout, I'm running exactly what I advised. I'm running Watchman of Seerath on goal. I'm running the Grey Leader, and I'm running a little bit of healing because I'm only respect level 5, okay? Gear-wise, guys, I've got the 3-star Cutlass on here. Really, really strong, okay? I've got on uh, the Superior Hubrick, which is actually probably my favorite item for Gorbag. I would either use this with the Fire Protection on um, mix servers... Or you can use this with the Shroud ability to give your army, uh, I think it's, what is it, a 70% chance when it's maxed out, uh, but a, a good chance to be Shrouded and avoid the first damage instance, okay? And I really like the Bone Mask. That's my favorite helmet for Gorbag. Since your units are already immune to madness, you don't need an anti-madness helmet. You could get an anti-stun helmet, like you could wear the Horseman's helmet with anti-stun on it, if you have it, which I don't. Um, but this madness is really nice because this is going to trigger in rounds one, three, five, right? So at some point, this madness helmet will line up with interrogator if you're running interrogator. Uh, and if not, it's just good to have some madness on your side. So I think this is going to be very, very valuable. My favorite best in slot accessory, I mean, a, a helmet and then accessory rise. It's really whatever you have access to. Okay. For the purple accessories, the Shield of the White Hand is probably going to be your best in slot because you can gain fantastic amounts of defense and stats um, for your commander and your units. Uh, but if you happen to have the Palantir of Orthanc, this is very strong too. gives more bonus damage. So between the weapon and the Palantir of Orthanc, my units have plus three, t plus three base attack and 10% total plus damage. Okay? So, guys... That is the gear. Let's talk about the units, okay? You can do a couple things with the units here, depending on what faction you are. Uh, it's hands down widely accepted that the Reapers are the strongest unit in the game for Gorbag, okay? Now, if you happen to be Gundabad, 
the Warlords are a nice complement as well because they have a little bit higher damage. For the first four rounds of the fight, they will be hitting a little bit harder than the Reapers because of their ability to penetrate 50% of the enemy's defense, okay? They have a little bit higher damage output. They're a little bit squishier with a base defense of only 10. Um, but they do have the nice ability that if you are attacking an enemy commander that's running ranged and melee, you will actually deal double damage. So if you are gun to bad, this is actually the mixture that I would recommend running. I would like to run, you know, 3,500 to 4,000 Reapers, 1,200 to 1,500 Warlords, and then you can either run Raiders in here for some more damage, or you can swap over to some Crushers for the defense debuff. However, uh, I... The crushers are okay. I like the I like to reserve them more for commander damage builds. I usually don't use crushers on my gore bag, okay? But you can. Uh, the other option, if you don't have warlords, is to run a similar build to what you saw earlier, which is a mixture of arbalests here because the arbalests are very strong with gore bag, uh, arbalests, reapers, and raiders, okay? And again, you can substitute out the raiders for crushers if you'd like. But those are the recommended unit compositions. That's the recommended gear, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take another look real quick at the recommended skill set, and then I'm going to let you go. Hopefully this video helped you out and gave you all the information you need to know about Gorebag after three seasons of use, three seasons of PvP optimization and perfection. Randy, love you long time. Randy out.